Hello there, everyone, and welcome. This is your host, Paga Wiggy, and today I'm starting to delve into some interesting topics that aren't related to gaming. I have a degree in physics because of my addiction to math, science, engineering, and chemistry, and to satisfy that itch, I've decided to start a new series of science and technology-related videos. Of course, we're still going to get plenty of Mordhau and gaming-related content, but this new series will just be in addition to the gaming content already being made on this channel. If any of these topics interest you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out my channel for more great content. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to give a like and leave some feedback in the comments to help make this channel better, particularly in regards to my upcoming science contact. This first video will be on the Photophone, an obscure invention by Alexander Graham Bell. That was part of the foundation that led to the development of the internet. In this first video, we will discuss a brief history of the Photophone, how its principles led to the development of fiber optics, and the physics of how it works. In short, the Photophone is exactly what it sounds like, a device used to transmit sound using light. The Photophone is the brainchild of Alexander Graham Bell and his assistant, Charles Sumner Tainter. The Photophone was the first attempt at creating a wireless communications device that could transmit sound to voice. Before the Photophone was invented, Telephone had already begun replacing telegraphs as the most efficient method of transmitting information over long distances. But Bell believed the telephone wires needed to carry the wires for telecommunication services were cumbersome and ugly, and he also saw the need for a wireless communication device. As a result, while Bell and his assistant began experimenting in the laboratory with improving the phonograph invented by Edison, Bell had also began experimenting with the photoacoustic effect. It is believed that Bell decided to begin his experiments with the photoacoustic effect when it was noted in 1878 that selenium crystals had variable resistance when different intensities of light fell on them. Using this information, Bell and his assistant were able to create a working photophone in Bell's laboratory in 1880, testing it by sending a signal from Franklin School to Bell's laboratory. This was possible for Bell because a lot of the foundation for the photophone could be easily derived from his work with the telephone needing to only change the mechanism by which the signal was modulated, transmitted, and received. In fact, in later iterations, the photophone receiver would be in part crafted from a basic telephone earpiece. After creating a successful photophone, Bell gave the patent rights to his laboratory, the Volta Laboratory Association, which he founded. The lab continued to improve on his design, but ultimately decided that it was not commercially viable. This was due to the fact that, at that time, the device had to rely on non-human light sources to function, as electricity had just become popular. As a result, during storms, or during any sort of inclement weather that affects the saturation of light in the atmosphere, the photophone would not function properly. The first photophones were also extremely sensitive to light interference, since they relied on the sun for the light that they needed to function. Another factor that led to the downfall of the photophone was the advent of radio by Marconi. Both photophones and radios use electromagnetic radiation to communicate, but the photophone relied on a directed beam of modulated visual and infrared light to operate. Radio was by far superior to the photophone in that the EM radiation emitted by radios could pass through objects better due to their much longer wavelength, resulting in them scattering less often as they pass through objects and the atmosphere. This would extend the range of a radio broadcast to thousands of times that of the photophone. Also, it's important to note that radio waves spread out radially from the source of admittance, meaning anyone tuned into the right frequency and who is within radio range can hear that broadcast. Despite its flaws, the photophone was used up through World War II. In World War II, the device saw a major reawakening because the directed signal of EM waves was not easily intercepted by enemies. It was used both by the Allies and the Axis, However, it was most extensively used as a communication device between tanks for Nazi Germany. The reason the photophone saw a reawakening at this time was because radio waves spread out radially from the source, as discussed earlier. If the signal you are sending over radio is not encrypted, anyone with a receiver that gets this frequency will also be able to hear your message. The photophone was a way around this problem because it relied on a directed beam of visual light to carry information in a specific direction. The beam would obviously spread out in radius over distance, but it was by no means nearly as radially permeating as radio waves. The range of these systems could be up to 11 kilometers in ideal weather conditions. While the photophone didn't end up taking off as a major technology, 
Its creation helped lay the foundation for the broadband internet that we have today. This is because the physical principles and concepts behind the photophone were fundamental in creating modern fiber optics. The photophone was one of mankind's very first attempts at using directed visual light radiation to transmit information over longer distances. While using mirrors to signal basic things with light had been used since antiquity, modulating the intensity of the light to transmit detailed information was first used by Bell in his creation of the photophone. To elaborate further, optics had been heavily researched for several hundred years prior to the advent of the photophone, and from this research it was well known how light refracted and reflected through objects when in transitions from one medium to another. Combining the principles of refraction and reflection of light through an object with the fact that you can modulate the intensity of the light to send information is indeed the fundamental foundation that led to the development of fiber optics and in turn modern broadband internet. Well, now we're going to discuss the physical principles and design of the photophone. The primary physical principles needed to understand the design of the photophone are electromagnetism and a basic understanding of materials physics, specifically the photoacoustic, photoelectric, photovoltaic, and piezoelectric effects. To begin with, electromagnetism is the branch of physics that describes electricity, magnetism, and light. In his design of the photophone, Bell exploited many aspects of electromagnetism. Bell used a modulated beam of sunlight to transmit sound in his photophone. He used the principles of refraction, reflection, and Snell's law of light to direct and modulate the light as it went into his apparatus and to control where it went so it could be picked up by a receiver. Principles of electromagnetism are further used in the design of the circuit for later iterations of the photophone and is key in the understanding of the photoacoustic and photoelectric effects. The photoacoustic effect is when light incident on a material causes that material to produce a sound. In order to produce sound, the incident light needs to vary in intensity over time. The way in which the sound is produced can vary in nature, sometimes being caused by the light heating the sample, for example, thus expanding and contracting the material as the light varies, thus producing sound. Naturally, there are a variety of other mechanisms at work that can also produce sound in materials when light strikes them such as acoustics due to the piezoelectric effect. In the first iteration of the photophone, Bell used the photoacoustic effect directly to produce sound from the signal received from a modulated beam of sunlight. However, in later iterations of this photophone, he would rely on the photovoltaic effect to receive his signal, and then use a set of speakers to produce the sound. The photoelectric effect is when electrons are emitted from a substance when light hits them, and is highly related to the photovoltaic effect. The primary difference being that in the photovoltaic effect, there is a voltage and a current that can be maintained in the sample rather than simply forcing electrons to be emitted from the material. This effect was utilized by Bell to receive the signal from his transmitter. The piezoelectric effect is when stress in a molecular structure causes the production of a current and vice versa. Well, Let's learn how these principles contribute to the design of the photophone. First, we'll discuss Bell's first prototype of the photophone. In its earliest and latest forms, the photophone consisted of two primary parts. A device that used sound to modulate light directed onto a plane mirror made of a flexible material, and the other part was a receiver that would pick up the signal and convert it into sound. The device that transmitted the sound signal was typically the simplest part of the apparatus. It was essentially a conical horn with a flexible plane mirror placed in at one end to reflect incoming sunlight that would act as a carrier for the sound signal. The mirror would initially be positioned in the horn as a plane mirror, but when you would speak into the receiving end of the horn, the sound vibrations would cause the mirror to oscillate back and forth. These vibrations would cause the mirror to vary between being concave and convex, thus varying the intensity of the light it's reflecting to the receiving apparatus. The receiving apparatus of the photophone wasn't much more complicated than the signal transmitter. And in the first versions, the receiver was much simpler because it relied on the photoacoustic effect directly to produce sound, albeit horrible quality sound. In some of Bell's first experiments, his receiver was lamp black, or oil lamp soot, inside a parabolic mirror. When he varied the intensity of sunlight incident on his sample, he could hear it squeal. Bell tested many different substances, but found that relying on the photoacoustic effect alone wasn't enough to create quality sound. 
In Bell's most successful iteration of the photophone, he did little to modify the signal transmitter, but heavy modifications were made to the receiving apparatus. In his receiver, he employed a selenium cell photodetector at the focus of a parabolic mirror. The mirror would help to capture the signal from the transmitter and focus it into the selenium cell, which would then vary in resistance as the intensity of the light hitting it varied. The selenium cell was then connected in series with a battery, a variable resistor, and an earpiece like that on a telephone. The selenium cell's varying resistance would alter the current flowing through the battery, and this signal would be broadcasted by the earpiece's sound. The variable resistor could be used to cancel out interference from outside light sources. The earpiece of the photophone worked identically to that of the early telephone. It consisted of a wire wound around a permanent magnet placed near a thin steel diaphragm. When the current through the earpiece varied, it varied the magnetic field of the magnet, causing the diaphragm to vibrate in a regular manner that would produce a good replication of the sound sent by the signal transmitter. The photophones used during World War II were much more advanced and capable than the ones produced by Bell. The photophones made by the Carl's Ice Company for German tanks were able to send signals up to 14 kilometers in ideal conditions. This was due in part to a long series of advancements, such as the implementation of infrared filters on tungsten lights to greatly increase the range of the transmitted signal. This was a great improvement over using modulated sunlight to send the signal, and it further helped to reduce the noise the receiver would pick up. The technology of the receiver changed a bit too, employing a lead sulfide cell that could detect infrared light. In summary, the photophone was Bell's favorite invention, and it helped to lay the foundation for fiber optics by being the first device to use modulated light to send information. To understand the workings of the photophone requires a little understanding of electromagnetism and basic materials physics. In essence, the photophone works by modulating a light signal to transmit sound wirelessly. Taking advantage of mirrors to modulate a light signal and photoreceptors to receive the signal, or using the photoacoustic effect directly to transform a signal of light into sound. Well, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Our next science video is already in the works, and it will be on the Demon Core. Nuclear physics is an extremely interesting topic, and very few videos on the Demon Core delve very deep into the physics of criticality, so I wish to address that problem. Just like this video, there will be an extensive discussion on the history, physics, and design behind the Demon Core. So if you enjoy this content, please subscribe, like, and comment on this video for more great content just like this. Go ahead and comment down below on any topics that you would like me to discuss in this format. And if I misinterpreted or misrepresented any information about the photophone, please let me know so I can correct it. I have a boatload of ideas of upcoming science videos, but I am game for anything interesting if you suggest it. Well, thank you all so much again for watching, and I will see you in the next Mordhau Guide video.